Hello. Hi, everyone. Got this wobbly table here. How's everybody tonight? Hello, Rose, Victoria, Ocean Angel. Let's see who else is here. Cherie, Patricia, thank you for joining Susie. And Daryl, of course. So I was trying to find out how many people we had on tonight and um, my cell phone is about to die and I could, I just ran scrambling to see if I could find the cord and I couldn't find it. I'm a little bit disorganized since I got back. So much to do, so much I'm behind on. Let's see. Window World, America's largest exterior remodeler, offers guaranteed low pricing. There we go. Okay. We have 15 people. There we go, 16. It clicked in. Deborah is here from Maryville, Tennessee. I have been there. Driven through there a few times. And I drove through I drove through from Asheville to here yesterday and if I did that trip, it was back in my 20s and I don't remember it. And that was pretty like nail biting. I mean, I wasn't biting my nails. I was sort of gripping the wheel. And because, you know, even though you're going like this, up and down and around and around, sharp curves, there's still loads of trucks. And it feels a little dangerous, <laughs> as it were. Uh, let's see. Um, Darlene is here from Mississippi. Jean is here from Huntsville, Alabama. Fantastic. Thank you for joining. We have 25 people. Uh, thank you, Sherry. I'm glad to be back. I did two big trips back to back. Well, not exactly back to back. The, my son got married in Prey, Montana, which, uh, is, I mean, where the resort sits is absolutely stunning. Uh, just all around view. And the sky was so clear and the stars were so clear at night. It was just amazing. You know, over here in Tennessee, you've got all these hill, hills and a lot of trees, very wooded and a lot of clouds. And you don't get that, that feeling of the expanse of the skies, the heavens. Uh, like you do over there. And that was just amazing. Everything went really well with the wedding. And I do owe you a video from that. I did shoot a little, you know, just a little montage of, of the weekend. And I'm going to try to do that in the next day or two. So also, hope, hopefully you saw my first installment from the Homesteaders of America conference. That was interesting, my first time. And evidently, I, Doug called me just about 30 minutes ago, check in with me and see how I, I liked it because I literally came home from Montana and was just kind of trying to decompress because that wedding was in the plans for a year and a half. You know, with the, the dress and all, you know, the, all of that. And it was a, a journey. And uh, I got home and I just kind of wanted to chill out and I w really wasn't planning to go. I wasn't planning to go to the conference and Doug called me on the Monday of the conference on Friday and said, you got to be there. And I said, oh, oh, OK, <laughs> OK, <laughs> I'll go. And so I, I threw the trip together, you know, just in three days. And um, so since the kitties were on vacay, so to speak, uh, my friends, um, 
I just said, can you keep them for a couple more weeks because, or at least 10 more days because Monday is, well, let's see, this is Wednesday now. So yeah, it's already been 10, 10 more days. So they have been away. And what needs to happen when they get back is I need to get a cat door or a cat house, you know, something uh, for them to, because they're going to be outdoor cats. They're just something, you know, so, somewhere protected and warm where they can sleep. So uh, that may mean a, a cat door gets put into my garage door. That was on the list. And um, Justin is not working here presently. So uh, all of that work came to a, a halt. And we'll see when I get back to it. <laughs> right now, I just have to get wood stacked. Daryl, the wood is here, needs to be stacked. And all that got split. Uh, that was sitting there in the way. So if you can come over ASAP, we can get that done. So um, I meant to call you, but I've been a, bit, a little bit busy since I got back. So uh, thank you, Ocean Angel. Uh, I'm just going to call you Angel, I think. Uh, let's see. Mernita is here from Buffalo. Hello. How are you tonight? Creative Annalise, just wanted to say hi from SoCal. Fantastic. Debbie is here from California also. Fantastic. Uh, so anybody that has joined us so far that has never been on my channel, please uh, leave a comment and say how you found my channel. And also, I hope you'll hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, right now we have 44 people watching and I'm going to get started here with uh, uh, a couple of things that I have and then we'll we'll have we'll answer questions that you may have. Well, that's what I want, but uh, Angel, but you have to, you know, take the door off. You need a carpenter to drill a precise hole in the door and all of that. And um, and then if I do that, I want to get the kind of cat door that they wear something on their collar so that only the cats can go in and out and not raccoons or, <laughs> or um, possums. And so um, I was just talking to Doug about all this and, and, you know, they have a lot of cats and they all live outside and they take care of the mice problems. And, um, and I said, well, I feel like because you have Molly, they have a, a big, I forget the name of that breed, uh, it's got that short curly hair with the brown and the dark brown and the lighter brown. And I think they're, they're really good protectors for the farm. And he said she killed a possum. You know, possum and raccoons can kill cats. Uh, they can be vicious. So, uh, yes, it was, Sherry. It, indeed, he was the last act. The file in, in the in part two. You'll she. Uh, I'm sorry. Sherry is asking me about the picture. Man in the picture uh, was Rory Feek, who was formerly of the group. I guess Joey and Rory, or Rory and jo Joey. I forget which direction it went. Um, and and he told stories and he sang and he performed, but he started out mainly as a songwriter in Nashville, uh, working with the country singers and writing songs for them. And that's kind of what he was doing when he met her. He told this story at the end of the, uh, at the end of the conference, he was the closing act and he sang for a good, probably close to an hour and a half. I sang and told stories, uh, told his story of her, but he, uh, well, I won't, I won't spoil it for you. If you look him up, you can, you can find their story online. I'm sure he documented their story in video and, and words and has just recently been, uh, in the last year or two started playing and performing again, um, solo. So, uh, he was there with his daughter, his third daughter and, uh, he was very nice. He made himself available to for pictures and to say hello to anybody that wanted to say hello to him. So very nice guy. 
and some fun songs. Oh, that's cool, Marianne. Where did you meet Rory? Oh my gosh. Okay, so one of the people that I met at the conference is on the live stream, and that's Mama Bear One. That's Melon checking in, and you'll be seeing her picture in part two. And we really hit it off. In fact, we we sat and watched uh, Rory's act together. Uh, she and her husband and I. Let's see. Airedale, thank you so much. Uh, so you don't end up with a cat food buffet. <laughs> Ranja is here. Are you talking about uh, ocean? Okay. Oh, wonderful, Victoria. Thank you so much. Did I meet Justin? Oh, Justin Rhodes. Yes, I did. Um, I was trying to think. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Kristen, you haven't seen my video yet, probably, because there's a picture of me and Justin in there. But l let me just say that Justin is was sought out and in demand. And, you know, they are there to make money <laughs> and, to, and to impart good information. Um, but they have merchandise to sell. And as soon as they uh, get through speaking, then they go and sit down and sign autographs. Uh, I mean, um, you know, sign books and things. And he's got a number of, of uh, pieces of merchandise he was selling. I, don't, I didn't really, I didn't actually buy any, buy anything um, from him, <laughs> but uh, I have a book for pre-order that I may, that I may order. Um, but uh, you'll, you'll, well, no, wait, let's see. Yeah. He spoke. He spoke in the in day one. That's true. Uh, I didn't. I had more that I recorded of him speaking to everybody, but you could you couldn't hear it that well. And I was trying to explain that in a video that I was shooting today. Is you know the audio when you're at an event like that, unless a person has a microphone on them, uh, you're not going to hear it clearly. And so I was just shooting with my cell phone. I crazily took my big camera with the zoom mic and my tripod and I was really weighted down and that caused me a lot more pain and anguish. <laughs> and I should have just, the only thing is you need redundant systems because if I had gotten over there and the, and the cell phone was full or the battery died, well, the battery did die, it died three times. Um, and I had a backup battery pack in the hotel and forgot to pop that in the backpack. So, you know, you have to be so prepared for stuff like this. And so I, um, I wound up just using my cell phone and my gimbal the whole time and not uh, mixing media, you know, because my camera is a different frame rate, if you know what I'm talking about. Cell phones are, uh, they shoot video at 60 frames per second, per second and, uh, uh, you know, all of my cameras shoot 24. So I have to pull all those clips into uh, a piece of software to convert them to 24 or 30 or whatever, you know, because 60 frames per second looks like the news, you know, real stark and real and, um, and movies are shot in uh, 20, well, it's 20, 23.976 or something, uh, close to 24 frames per second. So, you know, you convert that down and it just takes that edge of reality off of it. It makes it look, look a little bit more filmic. But when it's on the cell phone, it's never that great. And the cell phone shifts uh, shifts the color and shifts the <laughs> everything all the time. Sometimes you may see on my videos, gosh, the grass was green and now it's sort of yellow green. That's that. That's just an automatic color shift that the cell phone uh, does uh, on its own. And it's very frustrating for somebody who really cares about what their videos look like. But if you want to get the job done and want to get a lot of vid videos up fast, there's nothing quicker than just going around like that with your cell phone. 
So that's what I've been doing recently. Um, but I was given a couple of recommendations for uh, good, smaller, lighter weight vlogging cameras. And uh, so I may actually change that up. Uh, the thing I like about the, the cell phone is there's two cameras front and back. So, you know, you hold it out here, you could be shooting yourself or you could be shooting the other person. It's very easy to switch back and forth. Uh, but, but with a camera, it's, I mean, it's, there's only one lens and you have to set the camera, you know, it's not as easy. So anyway, that's just technical stuff. If you're into shooting, then you know what I'm talking about. So the point was when they were up there speaking with their microphones and I'm way in the distance with, well, I was on the front row, but I, it's still far away from, from uh, the speaker, you know, um, the sound is not that great. So I elected not to use a longer clip of Justin speaking. Yes, these cats are, are trained to litter um, ocean. Well, Susan, that's just it. I want to get the collar that says only an animal with the collar can go in. Let me know if anybody has uh, had any experience with those because I want to know if they're junk, if they don't work, if you've tried them and and all of that. Uh, the 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 benefit of having the cat door ocean and others is obviously so that the cats can get outside during the day. They can hunt mice. They can do whatever, and then they can get in where it's warm. Um, but that's going to require some, a carpenter <laughs> or you know somebody that knows how to do that with tools. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, that's, he's having four events and I don't know, one of them is a Homesteaders of America event. Uh, he's, uh, we're talking about Roy Feek again and he's having his, uh, so I don't have to go back up way up that grueling trip. I mean, I had the worst weather driving up there. The visibility was terrible. I was just like this for hours. Uh, and so I don't want to do that again. It's just too far. So, uh, fortunately, he is part of the Homesteaders of America organization, I guess you might say. And so he's having four events at his farm next year. So that is just an hour or so, maybe an hour and 15, 20 minutes from here. And I can um, literally just go down for the day and come back. So that's what I will be doing next year. Yes, it is a sad story, Sherry, but I tell you, he, um, you know, they, they really lived, the, I, I guess, 10 years, maybe they were together, and they really lived life to the fullest, and he honored her in such a, an amazing way and continues to, and, and uh, it's, it's really special. It's a very special story. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I don't know. Oh, oh, um. Hey, Steve, is this you or is this Rosemary? Steve was is our late bloomer friend that was in the hospital for a while. Home and doing much better, I hope. And Krista is here from Australia. How are things over there? Better, I hope. And uh, Mama Bear says, as pioneers, some of us would perish carrying all our necessities is a challenge. I know. Oh, my gosh, my back still hurts. Uh, no, I did not have an opportunity to actually have that conversation with him. Um, happy. Rebecca is here from Food Forest Next Door. Hello. She's in Louisville. 
<laughs> Daryl, when are you coming over to stack this wood? Jamela is here from Trinidad. He never was. Let's see. I don't know what that's a response to, but anyway. Uh, did you have that that um, that electronic device on yours, Connie? That um, that opens only for your cats. Does anyone watching has has anyone watching ever had that cat door that you can open? that the cats open because they're wearing something on their collar so that the possum or whatever following them or chasing them in the door can't come in. Hot, dry Florida. Oh, it was just, it was hot outside and mosquitoes and just oppressive and sweltering. I wanted to just um, take a moment. Yes, of course. Wow, uh, Marianne is asking if you can freeze celery. That's a good question. Obviously, you can you can freeze chicken soup. You could make up fr a chicken soup with celery in it and freeze that. But I have never actually just frozen cel celery by itself. Has anyone else? If so, leave her a response. Um, I find celery difficult to get going, and it it takes a long time to grow. So you need to start really early in the season. Uh, I had great success growing celery in California. One in particular, I think was two, 2014, I think was the year that I had such great success. I just, I had, I had, looks like a little animal sitting out there, but I know it's just a piece of wood. Uh, <laughs> I, I had bunches. I think I had six bunches this big around. It was crazy. And I juiced the whole thing. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and the thing about celery is it's got to stay moist. It can, it, because it, you just barely sprinkle the seeds on the surface and, and they have to stay moist the whole time. Okay, Daryl, help me out. Oh, look, Doug is here. Everybody say hi to Doug from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Isn't that nice that he honored us with his presence? <laughs> I know they're very busy trying to unpack. They took a motor home uh, out to... Um, Front Royal. It was in Front Royal, Virginia, from Missouri. So, uh, they uh, uh, Stacy was teaching a workshop the first day, so they had to be there for four nights, and then let's see, three or four nights on the road. So, yeah, it's like a week. So once it gets going, Marianne. Uh, you know, if you can get it going, it, it's it's not difficult. I also have a video about blanching celery, which is not cooking. It's actually you put something around the shaft. Uh, I mean, not the shaft, but the you know the whole all the stalks. You you you, you put something around them to keep. Like you could even put wrap them in newspaper with a a string around it. Although if that if it rains on that, that kind of gets yucky by season's end. But you kind of put that on when it's later in, in its growth, and then it keeps the uh, the stalks from being as bitter. Because if the stalks are really green, then they can turn out to be pretty bitter. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have 77 people on. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Kay, and I'm on a homestead in Tennessee. I've been an urban gardener for nine years, and now I am city girl turned homesteader and trying to learn how to turn this property into a sustainable homestead. I've got a number of things in place, namely water, heat, and I've got my food stored and various and sundry other things that I'm working on. And it's very easy to, to, you know, all the prepper channels can tell you, you know, kind of the things that you need to do to get prepped for whatever's coming. At any rate, there is, um, 
there's a woman in Switzerland and she sent this, I mean, I mean, this, this is in, look at all of these stamps. I used to collect stamps way back in the day. Look at all those beautiful stamps. I would take off. I was routinely, just like I saved eggshells today, I would routinely take stamps off and save them for my collection. At any rate, um, she follows my channel and she managed to, to email Daryl or I don't know how it went now. Daryl, you can straighten me out. But um, she sent a book for me or wait, is this for me? This is a bamboo book. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be starting bamboo seeds. Let's see. It says bamboo and grasses, simple steps to success, growing bamboo and grasses, simple advice on choosing the right plants, creating grass and bamboo features and keep keeping them looking their best step-by-step -step guides to show you exactly what to do expert tips and techniques for gardening that gets results well that's interesting now if i was putting in a pond wouldn't wouldn't it be lovely to have all these beautiful grasses and bamboo around it and some ducks of course swimming in it that would be awesome well i really appreciate this book and i used to have grasses in my garden in california I don't have any intentional grasses here, but I'm certainly going to look at this. And I thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is her name? Ah, is there a letter? Okay. Just a card. With greetings from Zurich, Florence. Her name is Florence. That's very nice. Thank you, Florence. Okay. Um, hello, CJ, Mary Hyde. It was great. <laughs> so my son's and wife's dog, Fred, is on Instagram at my bestest, no, wait, the bestest Fred. If you are a dog lover and you follow dog pages on Instagram. You can check his out, but he is really a perfect dog. I mean, he's I, no dog is perfect, so he's nearly perfect. Um, but like I said, he's a pet and his only job is to spread love and affection and, and enjoy his life. So anyway, Mary, I had a good, uh, a good a good visit with them and uh, short because I needed to get back here and now I've got to go get my cats which are some distance away so um, I got to figure all that out Gemma is here hello who else is here that I missed do what can no no <laughs> uh Hello, Edwin. Hello, Holly. It's good to hear from you. Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, that's a great tip. Uh, Holly grows her celery around an Oya, an Oya, O-L-L-A, -L -L -A, pronounced like O-Y-A, is a clay water vessel that you bury beside your plants, and then it um, seeps or sweats water out of the, through the ceramic and um, the roots just go all the way around it. And if you remember back in my California garden, when we would dig up an Oya, it would just be a completely round, perfect, and it was all shaped with the roots. It would just be like a round thing. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I haven't used any of my Oyas here. Uh, I want to. They're just sitting around. They haven't been used. A Bama gardener is here from Mobile. Ah, yes. Yes.
Yeah, see, that's the thing. I think the dog really helps keep the predators. Okay, so I think we're caught up with questions. I don't know about dehydrating celery, but if you guys are doing it. I'm trying to get caught up. Hold on. Um, Brian is here from St. Louis, not too far from the off grid with Doug and Stacy Homestead. I didn't know about it, Crafty Stash. That's I was I was kicking myself that I didn't know about it. Somebody asked me after the fact, "Did you go?" And I said, "I didn't know about it." Uh, but it was at his place, and I'll be going next year. Thank you, Angie. Ground up celery powder is good in deviled eggs. Yeah, I guess it would be. Hello, Tess. Yes, yes, I hope so too. Wow, Roxana Ornella from Buenos Aires. That's amazing. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, everybody, if you could just hop off, if you're on mobile and you, you could just click out of the live stream for a moment, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. And then you can come right back to the live chat. And for sure, if, if you're here for the first time, please leave a comment and let me know where you're writing from. We like to keep track of the various states. And of course, if you're in a different country, we love keeping track of that as well. So we have Argentina, we have Trinidad, we have, I'm not sure what all we have, but Patricia keeps track of that. Mary is here. Let's see. Oh my goodness, and uh, it's um, Taz, Tasmania, or Taz, uh, from Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful uh, that you, you said that. Let's see. Steve is sending. Uh, oh my gosh, I got to show this. Uh, okay, it's the same thing. Did you give me these seeds? Okay, you have to see this. All right, first of all, did you see that really big squash that I grew, the Guatemalan blue squash? Well, that was actually 16 and a half pounds, and I've never grown anything that big. This looks similar. I harvested another one today, which I want to ask you about. No, two. I got two today. One of them is nine and a half pounds and, and one is uh, maybe maybe five or six pounds. Um, and there's something wrong with it. And I want to ask you about it. But Steve, the person that we were just talking about who was in the hospital and is, is recovering, he looks really good here. Look at the size of this Let's see, look at the size of that squash. Can you see it? I bet you that is like close to 20 pounds. It's at least 15 pounds. Steve, are you still on? <laughs> Thank you for sending that so I could share it. Looks like somebody else sent me something too. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh my gosh, Mary is also from uh, Australia, from Adelaide, South Australia. That's fantastic. I don't know yet, Marianne. I well, I take that back. I was given one of these squash 
from the National Heirloom Expo in this in 2017 by my friend Glenda, who I met there. And she brought me this squash when they were driving through LA. And uh, I saved the seeds and then I planted a few over there. And hers was blue, sort of like kind of a mint blue green, but it's called Guatemalan blue. It's a rare heirloom. And it's fallen, it just, it's not that popular because it, it's not that marketable uh, because they're big and, you know, the butternut is much more popular. It's much more manageable size. By the way, I've got two more butternut out there that are still green and they're going to be big. They're going to be like that. <laughs> so I, uh, I have um, 25 pounds gete squash. Oh, 850 year old uh, variety, you mean? And Mix is here from Latvia. Uh, I wanted to show you. So, this one I got today, and it's been laying there like this, and it looked fine, and I picked it up, and this is on the back. And does anybody know if this is bugs or disease? It was on a, um, a cradle, not a very big one, but it, it did not, it wasn't laying right on the dirt, but this is, this is not dirt stuck to it. This is something happened to the surface. Does this look familiar to anybody? Steve, do you know what this is? I've got a bunch of those um, light gray stink bugs out in the garden. And I, you know, they're, they're gross. I have, I've gotten all of this spaghetti squash out and um, I have another Seminole. I have something that I don't, it's unidentified. And I have, um, two butternuts, maybe a half dozen more winter squash out there, but I brought in a bunch today. So the first round I is cured. Does anybody know how long you're supposed to cure? I know you're supposed to cure them between 80 and 85 degrees, but that can't be for a very long period. But mine were in 75 to 80, about 75 degrees. Uh, upstairs at the top of the stairs, it gets pretty warm. And um, they were like that for a week. So I know they need to come down and all the ones that I brought in today need to go up there. But I don't have any place here because now they're supposed to go, after they cure, they're supposed to go into cool, cool storage of 45 to 55 degrees for the whole, for the winter until you uh, you need them. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Does anybody have any thoughts? I don't have a, um, you know, a, a seller uh, or anything. So, I mean, when it, when it's in the ground, it's, it's about 55 degrees all year, but um, I never got that, got any, anything like that dug out. So I don't know what to do about that. Gosh, all of a sudden we have a hundred people. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'm Kay and I'm a, I'm a former urban gardener of nine years, and I'm now trying to develop a sustainable homestead on a large property in Tennessee. I'm on a Rocky Hill type uh, property that's half forested, and I am developing various parts of the sunny parts of the yard into various gardens. I have a, I have a flower bed. I have a very small vineyard of nine grapevines, and I have two tomato terraces, eight raised beds, an arbor, and I have a 40 by 30 side garden that's fenced where I grew okra, eggplant, beans, winter squash, cucumbers, melon. Yeah, cucumbers and melon uh, this summer. So uh, there's a whole lot more I want to do, but I had a lot of help this year. I had a really great helper. And um, I mean, I knew going into all of that, that I wouldn't be, uh, I couldn't afford to have a full-time employee. 
uh, indefinitely. So I was, I was just hoping to be able to get a whole lot accomplished uh, while I, I did, I did, you know, just say, okay, I'm going to spend this money um, for these first six months and just try to develop as much as I can. And uh, so that's what I did. So now I'm on my own and um, I've got a lot of work to do to clean up the beds, work on the inside of my house. I, I mean, I've got a whole, whole winter's worth of work to do. <laughs> uh, Daisy Joe is here. Let's see. In the garage is GR garage. My, my garage is not cool. It's not that cool though. I don't, yeah. See, I don't have a uh, basement. No, Connie. <laughs> That's funny. Cherie said that looks like an ancient submarine. Yeah, it, it's it looks like it looks like a boat that's been underwater and it's got all those crustaceans on it. So d does anybody have any thoughts about what that is? C. Lynn is here. C. Lynn, can you remind us where you are? Jira, Jira L. From the Caribbean. Fantastic. Oh, a moisture issue. Yeah, probably. Could definitely be that because we had a lot of water. Not a lot of water. A lot of water. Not. But I had I had hay out there. Uh, which, you know, retains a lot of the water, so it, it evens it out more. Canadian crookneck squash. How did you foil the, the squash bug this year? Do share. Oh, Daisy Joe, you think this is bugs? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you think it will affect the whole squash or just the rind? I'm thinking maybe if I cure it, it'll just, you know, the inside will be okay. So we have several people from Australia. That's awesome. Let's see. Are you talk Chris, are you talking to me about the squash, about canning them in chunks and freezing? I haven't even brought in my sweet potatoes. I don't know where they're going to go either. Cut off the bad area and use sooner rather than later. So, okay, so this is the first one I will use. I'm going to go ahead and cure it, though, right, in the warm, and then in, put it in the cool and then use it whenever. Um, probably what I should do. Wait, I don't understand. I thought you cured them in, in heat and then you put them into cool. 45 to 55 degrees. Uh, so if you're putting them in the furnace room, that means it's staying warm all the time, right? Are you leave it warm all winter until you use it, Daisy Joe? See, that's what I could do with this is I could go ahead and cook this. I think I can cook this without cu uh, curing it. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. And then I could just put it in, um, put the soft stuff, the puree. It's not really puree. You just scrape out the cooked squash and put it into a freezer bag and then just, just use it uh, for whatever. 
Actually, believe it or not, I've never made curry. I know that sounds crazy, but I haven't. I really should because I love it. Thank you, Gail. Yes, he is a very, very neat guy. Very tall. Wow. Because he walked right by me and I was like, okay. <laughs> Bug side up. Let's see. Cook it straight away. Okay, thank you. Uh, Curious Cat is here from Houston. Thank you. Right. Uh, yes, lots of bugs in Houston. I'm sure it's, yeah, we got the same problem. So many bugs. And, and there's just, there's, there's so many of those little, they're like light gray squash bugs. And, you know, you pick up the squash and they just like, there's, there, there's just like a lot. And I bet they did that. I bet it's them. I, I saw some other bugs out there, but nothing like that. Oh, it says 50 in the furnace room. Well, see, I could probably, temperature-wise, I could store things under the house. But it says don't store your squash where there's outside, where there's bugs. And I'm thinking, well, guess what? The other day when they were installing the generator, and I don't know if I told you about this. I don't think I did. Is he came out later and he said, oh, by the way, there was a, coral snake under there. And I said, a coral snake, <laughs> a coral snake. And, um, he said, yeah. And he sent me a picture later, but there is a, there's a poisonous coral snake. And then there's, I guess, a non-poisonous snake. And it depends on whether the red stripe is touching the yellow stripe of the snake. And he said, I, 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 um, what do you call it? Shushed it out the door or something like that. I said, you shushed it out the door. He said, yeah, I just shushed it out the, the door. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, great. Now it's in my garden, you know, because the door is like right beside my side garden. So, so I'm thinking there's a coral snake out there. And this was a few days ago. But anyway, um, the next day, Joey, my mower who grew up here, said, I don't think, you know, we have the, we have the ones that look like coral snakes. He, he said, but, um, they're not poisonous here. So it's like, Oh, good, good, good. All right, Connie. And, um, he said he didn't see any mice. So I'm just trying to figure out how he got under there because the door is really tight around it. And, um, I just, I don't know of another way it could have gotten in. The Cherokee pumpkin. Um, I might check that out. These, the, um, when you see these uh, Seminole pumpkins, they're perfect. They're perfect. I mean, they're just the cutest little thing. In fact, well, I'll show it to you next time, but they're in there. Um, but but they have this beautiful shape. Like it's it's kind of like a triangle, rounded triangle shape with a little bit of uh, grooves and um, very even color and, and uh, no bugs. And I remember I planted, um, this was a, H1 variety or something, you know, it, it had, it was developed at a university in the South. I forget exactly where I can grab those seeds and, and talk about it later. Um, but maybe that's why it did well. I don't know. Thank you. Linda's got, Linda's got the poem. Red next to black, friend to jack. Red next to yellow, kill a fellow. So you don't want the red next to the yellow.
Right, right, right. Daisy Joe, are you talking about this squash is only for animal feed or, or what? What are we talking about? Mm. Yeah, my bird seed is in the garage and it's in a locking box plastic box, no, a, a mouse could not get in that box. Uh, Roxana, my cat's name is she, it's a female. Uh, her name is Linden, L-I-N-D-E-N, -E like the tree. The Linden tree is actually mentioned in the Bible. And, uh, and my father came from a place called Linden. He, he, well, he was born there. And so that's why I named her Linden. I thought it was pretty. And I, I had another cat that I named after the Rowan tree, R-O-W-A-N. That's also a tree. And, um, but he had, uh, I got him, he was the runt of a litter that my, my neighbor had, her cat had. And um, there was always something wrong with him, but I, I couldn't put, put my finger on it. But he, uh, he had a, a bladder or kidney issue and he, he did not live very long. Uh, do I have a bedroom I could tape off fence and use as cool storage? Maybe. Maybe. That's a good idea. Yeah, I could probably do that. Until I have company and then I probably am going to have to use it. But who knows if I'll have company, you know? Who knows? I mean, I'll have company for Christmas because Walker and Margo are coming, but other than that, I don't know. Okay, from ba Baker Creek. All right, let's see. I am not lifting weights, should I? <laughs> now I need to I need to work harder on my on my body. Angie, some types of some types of winter squash, including your blue squash, are moderately resistant to scab. Scab. That's what it looks like. Scab. It looks like scab. That's what it looks like. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, if I close it, if I close off a, the small bedroom up there, it's not going to be cool. It, it, you know, it's not going to until it, until the weather gets cooler. I mean, it was 80, 84 when I got home yesterday. So, you know, and I'm not cranking the, the, I thought about putting them in the refrigerator, but you can't do that. I know you can't do that. They have to have airflow and they would get, they would ruin. In fact, speaking of which, the, and, you know, he's a really nice guy. So I, I hate to complain, but he insisted that this particular melon that he was selling, that I, I bought several of them this summer. They're really good. And he, he was insisting that it would last in the, in the, drawer in the refrigerator until Thanksgiving. You'll cut this on Thanksgiving and serve it for Thanksgiving dinner. And I said, great, give me four of them. And I put them in, in the in the drawers in the refrigerator. Forgot about them. Well, I opened that thing up right before I went up to uh, 
because I wanted to clean out all any possible bad food, you know, before I left to go up to the conference. And I opened those drawers and they were completely covered in mold. And I'm just going, what? Oh, it's terrible. It's not my regular refrigerator or I would have noticed it sooner. But, um, but anyway, I'll have to figure out and see if I can get the temperature down in that room. I don't know. I don't think I can actually, unless, unless I put some air con, you know, cold air conditioning in there. It'd have to be quite cold. Right. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could. You know, I have this shelving unit that I might be able to store them on upstairs. But it's not going to be 55 degrees. I mean, it's just not going to be that cold. Not for a while, you know. Uh, we are almost at six o'clock and believe it or not, my back hurts. I'm tired. So I am going to uh, sign off right on time tonight. If you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them underneath the video, not in the chat. And I hope you will consider, if you haven't already, subscribing to my channel. And please, everyone, can you please share at least one of my videos tonight with a friend? or on your social media, I would really appreciate it. And hopefully tomorrow or the next day, I will have the next installment. The next, the, the following day at the conference, I, sh I shot a lot more. I don't know what happened, but I did. And so I haven't reviewed it yet. I have converted it all to, um, to 24p frames per second, but, um, It'll either be longer or I'll split it up. I did shoot a uh, just, I just took a few pictures in Asheville. So I may tack those out onto the end of a part two of that. Uh, so I might have three parts to this last trip. And then I also have the wedding, the Montana uh, video. So thank you so much for joining. Please hit the like button on your way out. And uh, you have a great week and God bless all of you. See you next time.